and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to Outdoors People, with me, C.W. Getz, and her, Maya Marzaki. Good evening. It's Wednesday, August 30th, 2023. We've got a beautiful 76-degree Fahrenheit day here in North Central Illinois. Very sunny a little breezy, but um, just a nice breeze. And, you know, I flirted with turning my air on. I said, not going to do it. Not going to do it. It's just too beautiful. <laughs> outside. But yeah, uh, that equates to, for the rest of the world, 24 degrees Celsius. So what uh, what does that compare to you down there in yeah. Sao Paulo, Brazil, man? Yeah, it sounds amazing. Actually, my weather is pretty much like yours with a beautiful day of winter. Uh, with 22 degrees Celsius, and it means for UCW United States, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Ah, we beat you. perfect. <laughs> we beat you again. Four degrees, man. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to be bragging about, hey, I, you know what? I'm not going to brag about that when it's 90 and 100 degrees here. So you can, yeah, anything over <laughs> 75, 80 degrees, you know, you can keep it. 85 is probably my top. Uh, then it becomes yeah. a little uncomfortable. Yeah, hey, I you know what? Sweater, actually. It is a be- it is beautiful. It, it, this is the perfect time of the year too. Late uh, late summer for us. Late summer and late winter. For uh, winter for me. <laughs> you know, I heard something today. Uh, I was asked, um, "Are you a morning person or a night owl?" And you know, it's funny because I used to be this night owl. Well, I played in the band for a lot of years. Yeah. And, and just by nature, you're you're a night owl. You know, and I, I had to think about. It. I said, you know, I honestly used to answer that night owl, but I think. I really am a morning person now. I, I have yes. a morning routine. I enjoy it. How about you? Yeah, you are getting older, right? So Is that's that why you are a morning person right now. <laughs> One, the early bird. Oh, he's an early bird and night owl. You can't do both. That's like being a Republican and a Democrat. You cannot do that. <laughs> yeah, he just doesn't leap at all. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know if it's a sign of age or if it's just something where you change your routine. I, I don't know. You know what Yeah, is maybe your routine is different right now. I am always grumpy, but I wake up early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always grumpy. I love that. Yeah, That's my life. I'm always moody and grumpy, but yeah. I do like uh, waking up early. <laughs> I do understand that. I, I do understand. I'm actually, I think I'm the same exact way as you. So, yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, That's why, why we get along. along. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, hey, tonight's episode of Outdoors People is brought to you by Rutabaga Paddle Sports, providing time on the water. By Campground Views, making camping easier. By Duluth Pack, made in the USA since 1882. And by Jackson Kayak, pursuing joy through paddle sports. Tonight's episode is from business suits to bathing suits with our special guest, Stephanie Schult. A self-described typical American girl born and raised in Florida, Stephanie Schultz went on to earn a degree in biology and a master's degree in business. Following graduation, she entered the working world and remained there for the next 13 years, first as a business consultant executive for a car rental company and then for an online marketing company. Stephanie had the prestigious life, the big paycheck, the beautiful house and the luxury car which by society standards is perceived as someone who is successful. However, she felt something was missing and was determined to make a change. Stephanie decided to leave her corporate career, her title, and the big paycheck. She sold her car, purchased a 46 inch or I'm sorry, 46 foot fountain, I'm trying this fountain, Peyo sailing catamaran, obtained her captain's license and set out to sail the Bahamas in pursuit of her dream, sailing around the world living on the ocean. Stephanie is now a master free dive instructor, USCG 100 ton captain, seven time spearfishing world record holder, and a dive master. Not quite your typical American girl. And with that, welcome to the show, Stephanie. 
Thank you. Thanks for having me. I love it. By the way, how bad did he, did I screw that? Uh, uh, <laughs> how did I do? Did I mess uh, it up? Pretty, no, not too bad. Fantin Peugeot. <laughs> Oh, not there you too go. bad at all. He's French, right? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Hey, what's your weather like there? In and where are you at actually? Again, where are you stationed? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm in French Polynesia, so just sailed across the Pacific Ocean, and we're at a very remote atoll in the uh, Tuamotus. I love that. That's that's oh, beautiful. What do you think, Maya? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I think that I wish to be there with her as well. <laughs> that sounds just amazing. <laughs> I, but, you know, uh, we sorry, live vicariously sorry. through people here on this show, don't we? I mean, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true. That's nice, though. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and how did you first become involved in freediving? I got involved in freediving at this point. It's probably six or seven years ago. And I'm from Florida and we would go lobstering every lobster season. Oh, we're having a connection issue already. Oh no. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping that we were hoping that Elon's uh, invention of uh, uh, what is it Starlink would uh, would prevail, but oh. she's still with us. I see her there. Okay, there we go. I'm here. I don't know where you lost me. Let's try let's just even start all over. Let's try that again. Sure. So, I got involved in freediving about 6 or 7 years ago. Um I'm from Florida, and so we would go lobstering every lobster season, and my brother-in-law could hold his breath longer than me, dive down, and get more lobsters than me. So I am a bit competitive, and I decided to take a free diving course just so I could compete with him, and I ended up getting a, a bit obsessed with it. I went straight through, um, got my master's free diving certification, got my instructor's free diving certification, started teaching, and now I'm an instructor trainer for free diving. Wow. That's pretty mm -hmm. is, is he younger or older than you? Uh, he's, um, he's a little bit younger. Oh, okay. So it wasn't too bad. It's not like your older brother got beat by his, <laughs> his younger sister. <laughs> oh, it wow. is no. <laughs> it is the meaning of a healthy competition. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, listen, I understand you have several, uh, instructor certifications. Tell us about those. Right. So I am certified through PADI. There's a number of different organizations you can obtain a freediving certification through. But I chose PADI because I was scuba dive, uh, scuba dive certified through PADI. So there's a couple of levels. There's the beginner freediver, then freediver, advanced and masters. And those are all different levels according to depth and breath hold and uh, dynamic apnea, just some specific skills that you have to hit certain requirements. And then from there, you can become an instructor. Uh, and then after that, an instructor trainer. So at this point, I went ahead and um, went through all of the certifications, and I hold the top level for Patty right now. Wow. That's yeah. impressive. <laughs> That's impressive, yeah. And I saw the movie, The Deepest uh, Breath, and I mm. got so, like, amazed with that. And I'm wondering uh, um, what exactly, specifically, uh, the things you cover in the free dive courses you teach. Yeah, sure. So that was a great film. I actually was there when Alessia hit the record. So that was really, really exciting. No yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm definitely in one of the B-rolls that you see panning the audience. <laughs> um, so cool. I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> she's extremely talented and just a lovely human. But in freediving, we focus, it, it's primarily training your mind and, and your body. So we focus on breath holding, how to breathe properly, how to inhale properly, how to calm your mind, how to relax your body. And then we focus a lot on safety techniques. So how to tell if you're feeling the signs of hypoxia, which is low oxygen, um, how to save somebody if they do have a shallow water blackout or a loss of motor control. And then we go over a lot of techniques, um, head position, body position, kick cycles, how to kick, uh, to get to certain depths. And it's pretty involved, but if somebody's interested in, in two or three days, you can get certified for free diving. Is that for everybody? I mean, just can anybody do that? Or do you have to be one of those people that have, have a bit of a talent for holding your breath? <laughs> so the youngest, the youngest person I've taught is um, two six year olds. And the oldest person I've taught was 76 years old. So it's really for anyone. The only people who struggle learning how to freedive are the people who have had 
um, sinus surgeries or struggle with equalizing because of a medical reason. So a lot of people struggle with equalizing just because they haven't been taught the proper way to equalize. Mm -hmm. There's a certain technique to equalize your ears and your sinus cavity. And if you haven't been taught, then that's something you can learn. But if you have some medical um, things that are preventing you from being able to equalize, that's, that's really the only limiting factor. Other than that, you can be male or female, you can be young or old. Um, I've even taught chain smokers. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah, uh, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter if you're asleep or overweight. Of, you're making yeah. that up. You mean to, you no, really? Seriously. Yeah. You, you mean chain, when you say chain smokers, we're talking like Jackie Gleason, five packs of Paul Malls a day, right? <laughs> yeah. I think, I think he was up to two packs a day. And after the free diving Whoa. course, he actually quit smoking within oh, the next wow. month because he was so moved by it all. So you know, you could exciting. probably do a program like that and say quit smoking and sign for the program and quit that would be awesome. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I had no idea. I, I did I thought, you know, it was kind of gonna be there you have to have a talent for that in the first place. You just can't mm -hmm. you're just not that kind of person. But not true, huh? Not true. Anybody can do it. Wow. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking about that because after I uh, see the movie, I was so amazed that I went to learn, but I was like, okay, it's not for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now I'm feeling a little bit more confident <laughs> and the part of relaxing the body and the mind really got me. Really appreciate, I really appreciate that. I, I need that. <laughs> so I really can use some, some classes. But, well, um, we are going to a little break, so don't go away. We'll be back. A few years ago, someone asked Rutabaga's owner, Darren Bush, Hey, how long have you guys been selling boats? Darren replied, well, We don't sell boats. We sell time on the water. Of course, that comes in all types. We help people paddle more safely with rutabaga outdoor programs. We rent canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddle boards. We sell and install racks to get you from home to adventure. Rutabaga's got everything you need to get you out on the water, like paddles, life jackets, dry bags, and clothing. Rutabaga Paddle Sports, on the web at rutabaga.com. Mention you saw this ad on The Camping Show. It is time to go camping. Introducing Campground View's Virtual Tours. You can tour the campground, see the sites, see if they are available, and click to book your perfect spot. Hit the open road and explore the amazing places found in nature. We make it easy to discover, find, and book your site so that you can go have the fun and freedom you seek. Campground View's virtual tours make it easy and simple for you to see where you are going. Duluth Pack is handcrafted for every lifestyle, making memories since 1882. In store at 365 Canal Park Drive or online at DuluthPack.com. We are one big family, a community of paddlers, and we want to make sure that everyone has a great time out on the water. We are made right here in Sparta, Tennessee, USA. This is where every Jackson kayak is born. Built by hand with a focus on innovation. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We're Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. All right, we're back with our guest Stephanie Schultz. Stephanie, let's talk about spear fishing and the seven IUSA world records you uh, currently hold. And first of all. Where did you get started doing that anyway? Uh, I was, it was right after I became an instructor for free diving. I was invited by friends of a friend to cross from Florida to the, bah to the Bahamas on a spearfishing trip. And this group of friends just, they wanted somebody who was a good safety, who was good at free diving. So that's how I got invited. Yeah. It was kind of like a last minute cancellation <laughs> step in. <laughs> um, nice. 
And I went with them and connected with them so well. And one of them actually taught me, was like, hey, you want to learn how to spearfish? And I was like, yeah. And they handed me a pole spear and I shot a hogfish and the rest is history. You know, it's funny. I bet this guy did not think for a minute that when you did, when he did that, you were going to have seven world records to your, mm -hmm. to your credit, right? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> My definitely gosh. not no i'm not a very um like aggressive personality and i'm not an aggressive person at all but i am a, a very driven person and i be going into the water and selecting the specific fish that i want to eat that night and then mm. coming back filleting it using every part of the fish and then feeding myself and my family and my friends um i got to the point where my parents yeah. stopped buying seafood um, they, I, I provided seafood for the whole family right. and that made me feel really good. It's fresher yeah. than anything they're going to pick up anywhere at the fish market or anything. I'm sure. By right? far. Yeah. <laughs> so tell so... me, what, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Maya. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, please go. Oh, I was just going to ask her, you know, how long did it take you to get to those seven records? I mean, is that over what kind of period of time? I got my first one in Costa Rica, probably four years ago or five years ago. And then, um, then I bought my boat four years ago and I moved on to, on board and moved over to the Bahamas. And since I was living in the Bahamas, spearfishing is still very much a male dominated sport. So there's a lot of records for men and there's not very many records for women and especially on pole spear because it's more primitive gear. So here I am in one of the best places in the world with the mm -hmm. biggest fish and the most beautiful water living on my boat full time with a pole spear in my hand. So I got pretty lucky. <laughs> you know, you just sang Maya's tune, didn't she, Maya? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm signing <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's just amazing. Again, a healthy competition for you against the man <laughs> and yep. against yourself as well. Right. And everything you try it and you have done, you just, got like the highest position so that's very impressive congratulations <laughs> and you. um what is uh shark diving exactly <laughs> yeah so i think the the number one fear people have of the ocean is with sharks thanks to the movie Jaws and yeah. a lot of movies out there and so people have this crazy fear of the ocean and they never get to experience the beauty of it or the interactions with all the marine wildlife because they're terrified to even put their toes in the water or go past the beach. So when I started spearfishing, I quickly realized that sharks are opportunistic. And when you're spearfishing, there's always going to be sharks there. So I took the opportunity to study with a bunch of shark biologists and scientists to learn their different behaviors so that when I'm spearfishing, I can do it safely and eliminate risk as, as much as possible by reading their behaviors. So when I moved on board and started offering charters, one of the things I started offering was the opportunity to free dive with sharks. So I would have people come on board and learn how to free dive, learn how to spearfish. And then we'd actually jump in the water when there were sharks around so that people could learn the different species of sharks, learn their different behaviors. And I took people who were crying and shaking, oh, wow. terrified, like <laughs> almost to the level of having like a phobia of sharks. And within oh. five to 10 minutes, they're no longer squeezing onto my hand. They're swimming by themselves, <laughs> diving down, trying to get closer with wow. the sharks because most fear is just lack of knowledge. And once you yeah. have the knowledge and realize that the sharks aren't out they're not man eaters they're not out to attack you then your whole perspective on the ocean changes and on sharks yeah that's beautiful i mean these people that i were these these are grown men yeah. <laughs> i had are a very crying? large man on my back um <laughs> for, for about really? five minutes straight yeah <laughs> my, you cannot imagine me yeah <laughs> What's it like to have a grown man cry in there and hold your hand? He's scared of a shark. I mean, that's got to be, uh, that's got to like be a dominating sort of a, you know, situation. I'm, I'm guessing, it's, you know. Well, it's really beautiful because they're forced to be vulnerable in a way that they're not typic typically vulnerable. And I feel really honored and blessed that I'm in a position to take them through this process in a healthy manner. So at the end of it, they can't wait to go back in the water. And that's the <laughs> ultimate goal because people protect things they love and they've experienced. And so if they have these amazing experience, they're going to love and want to protect sharks in the ocean. And, and that's the goal. Wow.
you know, some women might take that opportunity to say, yeah. to make fun of them and go, you know, really? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why you big... don't teach. That's why <laughs> I actually teach. I them make fun of themselves. They make fun of themselves at the end of the day. So it's, it's all in good fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's funny. Oh <laughs> so and, and when you take these when you take these guys down there, um I, I mean I just I wish uh, I wish I could see a I wish I could see some video of that because that would be fun. Um but I mean, are they really, they just, they kind of hide behind you at first or what do they do? Are they, <laughs> I'm just curious about that. Yeah. So typically what happens is I'll get. Oh, no. oh we lost her. We lost her. In the oh, most let's... excited question. <laughs> yeah. This was getting really good here. I was going like, okay, I'm going to hear this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are we there? Yeah, Listen, start, just when you started, it just cut out. So start out over. I apologize. Okay, so I'll get, I'll have my mask and fins and jump in the water, and then they sit on the back of my boat and they put their mask and fins on, and then I turn around and they give me their hands and I piggyback them. So oh. they're just holding on to the back of me, and that way they can keep their mask, their face in the water next to me, but their whole body is kind of on between them and the sharks. So yeah, you're shielding them. That, there's that barrier. And then once they feel comfortable enough to just hold my hand, then I'll tell them to wait and I'll dive down and show them what a, an appropriate interaction is. We never want to touch the sharks. We never want to go okay. after the tails or surprise the sharks. We just want to go down and coexist with them. And so I'll show them kind of how to do it. And then I'll hold their hand and dive down with them. And before you know it, they're, they're doing it on their own. That's so cool. <laughs> You know, speaking of what is your what is your most favorite uh, or favorite? Let me try that again. What's your most <laughs> frightening thing you've experienced while shark diving uh, or free diving? Both of them, either one. Um, I've actually never been frightened when I was free diving or or spear fishing or shark diving. There was never a moment that was scary to me. There was one situation uh, where there was a pregnant bull shark behind the boat, and I jumped in because I wanted to interact with her and just see her because she was big and beautiful and mm -hmm. she when i jumped in the water i made a little splash and splash the vibration is what attracts the sharks and she <laughs> she actually turned and came up to the surface um and came up to me and i just had a mask with a gopro on it and i i didn't want to scratch the mask or the gopro so i didn't but i didn't want to touch her because i didn't want to startle her so i just yeah. kind of tried to move out of her way and she came straight into me and ended up hitting one of my fins and got oh, wow. scared and then swam to the bottom so i wouldn't say i was scared in that moment it was more just a surprise i wasn't expecting that behavior that's not a typical behavior from a shark so yeah. it just was a nice humbling experience that you can have <laughs> years under your belt and they're yeah. still wild animals <laughs> yeah that's true that's a good that's a great point yeah, it's just another day at the off sea, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's funny. And uh, you offer live hard trips. Let's have you walk through a typical day on one of those trips. Sure. So people will come on board from all over the world. Uh, they'll either come solo or with their friends or family or coworkers, and you move on board. So I have a Four, it's called four births and four heads. So four bedroom, four bathroom on board. So I can take up to six guests um, sharing a cabin, two people sharing a cabin. And you come on board and in the morning, we have our coffee and breakfast. We go over free diving techniques and spear fishing techniques and shark diving techniques. And then we suit up and we go for a dive. And depending on where we are, we'll focus on whatever marine wildlife is in the area. So whether it be sharks or dolphins, turtles, stingrays, manta rays now, uh, it's it's really special. We'll come back, we'll have some lunch. And then typically we jump in the water again, pretty much every day. We want to try to harvest at least one fish. We try to eat everything fresh and we only take what we're going to eat that day. And then in the afternoons, we'll go to the beach, light a bonfire, have a couple beverages, make some wow. s'mores. And then we'll spend the night kind of watching the stars. Typically when you're in the Bahamas, there's about 10 shooting stars a night. It's mm. magical. <laughs> and then we go to bed and do it all over. <laughs> Oh my gosh, CW! My question is for you right now. Uh, when are we going to do that? As soon as we get <laughs> off the air, we're going to sign up for this trip because. <laughs> and you did say four bathrooms, right? Yes. Yep. 
I can't, that, that then it just blows my mind. Um, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I mean, you know, what would be really cool though, is to do one of those trips and, um, and, and shoot footage of the whole thing. I think that would be amazing. Oh, yeah. You're both yeah. invited. <laughs> I think okay. we're going to be talking about that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> don't invite us if you really don't mean that. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, you, you are a hundred percent invited. <laughs> because we're the kind of people who will take you up on it. I, I can promise. Yeah. That's amazing. So which of your excursions has been your favorite so far? I mean, you've been at a lot of places. Uh, which one have been your favorite? Um, probably I have two favorite, favorite experiences of all. Actually, I've just added a, th a third now. But my first one was um, going to Tiger. It's, it's called Tiger Beach in the Bahamas. And it's a place where they've been doing shark diving for a couple decades now. And the tiger sharks I don't want to say domesticated because it's not the right word, but they're very familiar with humans. So they'll mm. swim right up to you and you wow. have to choose to get out of the way because they won't get out of the way. And oh, there was one time where a big female named Emma swam straight up to me and I kind of played chicken with her a little bit and she just came straight <laughs> in. I had to put my hand up and we were nose to nose for a second. And then I just kind of pushed her off to the side and wow. just having that experience that's so different than what I grew up knowing about sharks and then seeing it for myself and experiencing it myself and sharing that moment. It was, that was pretty life-changing for me. Um, and then the next life-changing experience was I went to Norway and I had the opportunity to free dive with orcas, uh, killer whales oh. in the wild, uh, while oh. it was snowing outside. <laughs> uh, it looks like Narnia around you. And my boyfriend and I had an, an amazing moment where a mom and a baby came in and interacted <gasps> with us. And the level of intelligence of an orca is completely different. The how it feels in the relationship and the inter interaction is totally different than a shark. A shark is very much a fish and the, the orca is very much a mammal. You feel like you're on the same level as them. They're wow. so intelligent. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, I, I have to ask you, Stephanie, did you ever picture you'd be doing something like this when you were a kid? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I did. I did as a young really? kid. Um, oh. And even in high school, I had a pickup truck and I always kept a bikini in my pickup truck. And after class, I would go over to the beach and put on snorkel gear and I'd be snorkeling around. But it just never dawned on me that it was possible to do this with your life. I was always taught right. that, you know, society teaches you like you go to school, you yeah. go to college, you get a master's, you get you get a job, you climb the corporate ladder as high as you can. And you try to get that title and that paycheck. And if you wanted to just buy a boat and sail away and go play with orcas and sharks, like that's not, that's not a real job. That's not, that's not <laughs> something you can live off of. Like that's not something you do. So it just never occurred to me that it was possible um, until I had kind of my aha moment. And I said, but why not? Like, why, why is it impossible? Well, you had me a pickup truck and I thought that was cool. So yeah, I mean, the rest, <laughs> <laughs> that's just so Yes, everything just amazed me. You are just a amazing uh, lady, and uh, you are such a inspiration for everyone, but mainly for for women and mainly for me. Um, and uh, you said so many like amazing stuff, like uh, fear is a lack of knowledge, and um, being vulnerable in a healthier way. That's just so amazing, so impressive. And I'm sure you promote lots of good changes in many people's life. That's amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But, well, we have some pictures and videos to look up, but after this little break. So don't go away. A few years ago, someone asked Rutabaga's owner, Darren Bush, Hey, how long have you guys been selling boats? Darren replied, well, We don't sell boats. We sell time on the water. Of course, that comes in all types. We help people paddle more safely with Rutabaga Outdoor programs. We rent canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddleboards. We sell and install racks to get you from home to adventure. Rutabaga's got everything you need to get you out on the water, like paddles, life jackets, dry bags, and clothing. Rutabaga Paddle Sports, on the web at rutabaga.com. Mention you saw this ad on The Camping Show. It is time to go camping. Introducing Campground View's virtual tours. You can tour the campground, see the sights, 
see if they are available, and click to book your perfect spot. Hit the open road and explore the amazing places found in nature. We make it easy to discover, find, and book your site so that you can go have the fun and freedom you seek. Campground View's virtual tours make it easy and simple for you to see where you are going. Duluth Pack is handcrafted for every lifestyle, making memories since 1882. In store at 365 Canal Park Drive or online at DuluthPack.com. We're one big family, a community of paddlers, and we want to make sure that everyone has a great time out on the water. We are made right here in Sparta, Tennessee, USA. This is where every Jackson kayak is born. Built by hand with a focus on innovation. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We're Jackson Kayak. We are. We are. We are Jackson Kayak. And we're back with our guest, Stephanie Schult. Let's uh, take a look at some of those photos that Stephanie sent us and uh, we'll have her tell us a little bit about Whoa. it. Whoa. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow it's big and Impressive. beautiful oh my god that, so yeah cool. so we just sailed over to panama from the bahamas and we went through the panama canal over to the pacific side of panama and we couldn't stop catching mahi we were catching mahi mahi it was it was mayhem um but we actually ended up keeping this one uh we only keep probably one out of every five that we catch depending on our space in our fridge <laughs> so wow. this was a really nice one that's amazing that's a beautiful fish by the way yeah, stunning so colors cool. yeah whoa <laughs> yeah that's wow. beautiful that's so impressive that would be this dinner for a, a few days <laughs> <laughs> this was fun. So I um, became friends on social media with a Bahamian underwater photographer. His name's Andre Musgrove. He's a super talented um, young man who's from the Bahamas. And we went on our first trip together to Bimini and we jumped in the water. Our, we were planning on diving with hammerheads and there just so happened to be a tiger shark there. And this tiger shark's name is Joker. And this was the first season that Joker was spotted in Bimini and wasn't really super familiar with humans and didn't have um, didn't have her manners down. <laughs> so she <laughs> um, she so fun fact, sharks are actually somewhat drawn to the color yellow. We call it oh. yum yum yellow. So I wore a yellow bikini on purpose because I wanted <laughs> the sharks to come closer. And Joker <laughs> loved my bikini, came right up. Um, I left the surface because when a shark is approaching you, you want to dive down towards the shark. And I met Joker midway um, and what? she came right into me. So I put my hand on her nose to redirect her and she, uh, tiger sharks do something called exploratory bites. So they close their nictitating membrane, which protects their eyeballs. And then they take a couple bites to see what it is that they're bumping into. It's not with the intention of eating you, um, but that's why you have that experience. <laughs> Holy smokes. Whoa, I'm never going to wear yellow anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and she did it on purpose. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Oh my god. So here so again, beautiful. you can see the yellow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This um, crazy. Um, um, this was the experience I described of being nose to nose with the, the female shark that came in and mm -hmm. Yeah, she would have just kept going. You could see she also closed her nictitating membrane. You can see her eyes white. That's the membrane over her eye for protection. Oh. But this one didn't take any exploratory bites because she's really familiar with humans. Um, I try to avoid interaction when I can. I try, Now I move out of the way more. This was my first experience there, and I just wanted to see what she would do. And that's yeah. why I ended up having this experience. Wow. And uh, what happens when they bite you just to check it up? I mean, well, <laughs> you don't want them to bite you. So with okay. a shark, their mouth is under their nose, like on the bottom side of their body. So as long as you have your hand on top of their nose, 
what you want to do is is push down and away from you so that their teeth stay below you. Um, and it's kind of like similar to a dog when you're asserting dominance by just showing that you're dominant, you're kind of like the pack leader in, in a way. Um, the sharks will tend to just say okay and with joker that last photo when she did the exploratory bites i stayed in the water with her for two to three hours and never had an interaction again she just swam around peacefully with us and understood what i was and i wasn't a threat and we had a great time so wow. with a shark if it comes in at you on top of its head or on top of its nose flat hand push down and away and uh, you'll be fine you'll be absolutely fine so i i did hear that somewhere you put there on there yeah. I, you know, you don't believe, I don't believe everything I hear. I mean, yeah, just, true. I'm true. the same. I heard that, but I didn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good to know. <laughs> and, uh, and how crazy you playing like, okay, uh, being dominant with a shark. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh my God. That's, that's crazy. In a yellow bikini nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. I think. <laughs> The biggest thing to note, too, is in all of these situations, the sharks, it's very clear water. There's not a lot of disturbance. I'm with very experienced people. I'm I'm experienced myself, and we're not doing any shark feeding. So there's no mm -hmm. chum in the water. There's no feeding that's taking place. The sharks aren't in the feeding mentality. So their behavior is going to be a lot different. You can see these two sharks, their pectoral fins are flat, straight out, like um, parallel to the bottom. Once they drop, their pec fins, that's when they go into predatory mode. So they start oh. being frenzied, um, like sporadic with their behavior. They start swimming a lot faster. If you ever see a shark that's acting like that, you want to remove yourself from the water as quickly as possible. But don't kick and create bubbles because that's a very, that's what bait fish do is they create bubbles. Oh. So always choose the situation where you're minimizing risk and you're putting yourself in a position to have a positive experience with people who are educated. Um, the reason mm. why we have most of our shark bites is because it's at the beach in the, the shore break with surfers. It's m not clear water and they're thrashing around and it's mm. um, the sharks mistake them for fish. Wow. So yeah. I've never been mistaken. There, it's, it's very obvious in these situations that I'm not food to them. Yeah, yeah that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many, how many days will that Even feed? I mean, that fish is um, huge. <laughs> it is your size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a nice wahoo that we got. And that one, typically, it's just my boyfriend on board and my um, my two puppies. And my one puppy just passed and not just one puppy. But mm -hmm. we have friends who come visit all the time. And we love to give fish back to the locals. We have all the gear. We have all the experience. We're I caught this one on a rod and reel, but a lot of times we're diving in and spearfishing. And a lot of times the locals don't have access to the equipment or to the skills or the know-how that we do. So a lot of times we'll get a fish. And then this fish in particular, we ended up donating the entire fish to the locals at the dock uh, when we pulled up to the marina in the Bahamas. <laughs> That's a way to make friends fast, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it feels good. We're in their waters and their land giving back. Uh, it's yeah. a way to really feel good yeah. and create good karma. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's a beautiful colored fish, too. I mean, I, I mean what'd you, what was that, a flounder, you said? A wahoo. A wahoo. Okay. Yeah, wahoo. Yeah, that's a hogfish. <laughs> so this is kind of, if you were to say there's one fish of the Bahamas, this is the fish of the Bahamas. It's a big male Bahamian hogfish. Um, and they're a nice white flaky meat. They're super delicious pretty much every way that you eat them. And they are a great fish for beginners because they kind of just sit there and let you shoot them. <laughs> uh, so they're not very, they're not very challenging, but they're really challenging to catch on rod and reel. So you really can, you're going to have the most luck spear fishing for them. In the Bahamas, you can't scuba dive. You only have to free dive and you can't use a gun. You can only use a pole spear or a sling. So there's oh. definitely some challenges. Um, the populations are really strong in the Bahamas, which I love seeing. Um, but yeah, they're, they're one of my favorite fish for beginners because it's really rewarding to get yeah. uh, get a hogfish. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> want to have some success, I'm sure, at first when you're learning some things, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So 
this is probably the fish I'm most proud of. Um, this is another Wahoo. Uh, it's 84.6 pounds. You can kind of see the scale up at the top there. So the reason why this fish is such a big deal is because I landed this fish by free diving on a pole spear. Um, and with a pole spear, you can only shoot about four to five feet distance. So with Wahoo, they're a pelagic fish and they're really smart <laughs> and they're really fast <laughs> and they're really powerful. And wow. it's extremely hard to get close to them. Um, and this fish ended up not only being the woman's world record on pole spear, but it also beat the men's world record on pole wow. spear. And to Whoa. date, it's the largest Wahoo ever recorded landed in history on a pole spear. Holy <laughs> so, <Whoa>. yeah. Wow. <laughs> about this fish. That's super impressive. I bet you had a beer at the end of that. Uh, <laughs> we had quite the celebration. <laughs> yeah, it, that was, we were in super remote Bahamas with a bunch of locals. One of my local friends drove my, we were diving off my catamaran, which is, also really special because typically you're on a big fancy sport fish boat with all this high-end equipment and here we are on my catamaran with a full <laughs> sphere and uh, <laughs> it was just a special day all around uh, meant to be meant to happen yep yeah that's impressive <laughs> yeah that's the same fish when i brought it on my boat i was really excited <laughs> Love the color really of these beautiful yeah. whoa there we go. This look, <laughs> reminds me of Gilligan's there's Island my, for some reason. I love yep, this. <laughs> there's my family. <laughs> this is my family. So um, Finn is my puppy. So that's the one chasing the sand. He, I rescued him from the Bahamas. Uh, he's a pot cake puppy. So they're called Royal Bahamian Pot Cakes. It's a um, breed of dog. And they're just the street dogs in the Bahamas. But he had been rescued. He was about not even two pounds when I got him, maybe four weeks old, had just been thrown into the bush to die. And he was rescued and given to a shelter. And I took my dog of, well, he was 12 at the time, Zeke, who lived on board with me. And we went to the shelter and I said, I really want to rescue a pot cake puppy because I started my adventure here in the Bahamas. We're about to leave to go sail around the world. And this would be such a great way for me to take a piece of the Bahamas with me and also like, taken a dog that needs a home and my dog Zeke had been diagnosed with cancer so I knew he didn't have long so it was just a great way to keep him young and train Finn and then that's my boyfriend Cole this is in Panama <laughs> this is that's after we made it across the canal that's a wonderful story and thank you for sharing yeah. that too and that's yeah. so cool. such a lovely family yeah <laughs> thank you Oh, this is cool. <laughs> and so in the did, ocean. Yeah, I love this. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, a statue by the magician David Copperfield. He uh, put this right off of his island in the Bahamas and the Exumas for his uh, wife. I think it's his wife. Her name's Chloe. And this concept was an idea that Andre Musgrove, the underwater photographer, had. Um, to go down and have me pretend to play the piano and a dress. And he put some music to it. It ended up going a bit viral, but it was one of my most favorite underwater photo shoots. Just the concept was beautiful and it was a way for people, regardless of their understanding of the ocean, to kind of relate through seeing this, this photo. That's so cool. Yeah. That is yeah. so cool. Like there is no word to describe. Yeah, I know, right? It's so <laughs> it was beautiful. it was very cold. It was very cold that day. <laughs> I was <pretty> oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. I love that. That's awesome. Is that the last picture we got? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. I was that, awesome pictures, by the way. Those are those Thank are amazing. You. Um, really. Uh, well, what of all the things you're involved in? What would you say of all of those things is is probably the the biggest, uh, most misconceived by people? Mm, I mean. Yeah, everything about my life is misconceived by people. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> um, Where do you people, start, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, people think, for the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people think free diving is, is crazy, that we're insane, that we're going to go brain dead by holding our breath so long. So that's a misconception. <laughs> wow. uh, people think me being, I bought the boat by myself. So I was a single woman on the boat just with my one dog, Zeke. Um, the fact mm -hmm. that I'm a female captain doing that, people think that's crazy. That I left a corporate <laughs> career to sell everything and buy a boat, bust out another thousand, like you're not going to be successful. They think that yeah. was crazy. Um, shark diving is is severely, there's 
a misconception with that, that they're just going to eat you, that they're mindless killers, huge misconception there. And then um, with spearfishing, just it's the most sustainable and ethical way to land fish and provide protein for yourself. So it's, it's hard to pick which part of my life is the most, <laughs> most misunderstood. It's the, my whole life is misunderstood. <laughs> Well, I got to tell you something. If, if people, you know, there was a, we got a lot of, I got a lot of feedback today, a lot of comments on, uh, on you on this episode tonight. And uh, people are like, that is so cool. I got to tell you, um, I would imagine that, that anyone that meets you or, or knows who you are or gets to know you, um, has to at least think if they don't say, um, gosh, I really envy her. I, I mean, gosh, if I could do that, if I had the guts or if I had the, that I mean, that's impressive, and it's got to make you feel good that you can be um, an influence to people. A lot of people, yeah. Like. And I feel like the misconception comes from uh, uh, the luck, the lack of the courage to do the same and follow the dreams. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we'll wind it down here in a couple of minutes. Um, let me ask you real quickly, Steph. What's the question you've always wanted to be asked? but no one has asked it yet. <laughs> oh, you're there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you hear my question? No, sorry. I lost her at courage. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I, uh, yeah. well, we get, we're, I just said we're winding down in about two minutes here. W real quickly. What is the question that, that um, you've always wanted to be asked, but no one's ever asked it. You got one of those? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody <laughs> asks me, like, what are you doing? Um, what is this? What is that? But they, how are you doing this? But they never ask me why. Like, oh. why did you make this change? Why did you make oh. the jump? Why are you on a sailboat? And that's the question I wish more people would ask. And the answer is kind of simple. Why not? Like, we have <laughs> one life. To, <laughs> we have one life to live. And I get to do what I want to do with who I want to do it when I want to do it, where I want to do it. I mean, this is the ultimate freedom yeah. and it's possible. And it's not just possible for me. It's possible for any single person out there who has a, this dream or any dream similar. And uh, it is possible to break out of the matrix and the rat race. And, <laughs> and that's my why I, I do this because I want that freedom, but I also want to show other people that that freedom can exist for them as well. I think I, Maya, I think I'm going to speak yeah. for you. And myself yeah. both and say we both envy you for, for doing that yes. because we were talking about doing something, yeah. some, not quite to that degree, but uh, uh, for us, it would be huge. And uh, it's just amazing. You are an amazing lady and to say the least. Yeah. And Thank thanks you. for speak with, for me because I'm speechless right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's just so impressive and so amazing. Thank you very much for share with the world your dreams and everything you are able to do and uh for people see more and know more about you when you are adventurous where can people find you online yeah so probably the most is instagram uh freediver stuff is my instagram handle and then if you want to watch any of the videos of our adventure i don't do too much but on youtube it's say la vie which is the name of my boat so you can check me out there as well that's fantastic. Well, Steph, listen, we want to thank you so much uh, for coming on the show and being our guest here this evening. Um, it was an absolute pleasure and uh, really a privilege uh, to have you on the show yeah. so and get to know you. Thank you both very much for this time. I appreciate it. It was so nice getting to know you guys, and I can't wait to have you on board. So let's talk <laughs> about it. Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I cannot thank you enough. And uh you know, compliment you enough. So thank you again for being here. And uh, we'd also like to thank each of, us, of our sponsors to bring you tonight's show. Ruta Bega Pedal Sport, Campgrounds Views, Duluth Pack, and Jackson Kayak. Be sure to tune in for next week's episode, The Wonderful World of Dragon Boating, with our special guests, Rosa Abdallah and Mark Applewhite. Along with Maya Marzaki, this is CW Getz saying thanks for tuning in to Outdoors People. We'll see you next week. Ciao.